Today we have one of the hardest punchers in the entire history of the sport of boxing, hailing from the U.S. territory of the Virgin Islands, the one, the only, the Hawk. We have Julian Jackson. Let's get into it. Julian. Yeah, this, yeah, is, this is Julian Jackson. How you doing, Julian. man? Julian. How you What's doing? What's up, brother? Pleasure to see you, man. I haven't seen you in years. Awesome, man. Good to see you guys, too. Yeah, we are. Uh, so you you still you still in Jamaica? Where are you at? Virgin Islands? Where are you? I'm in the Virgin Islands. Yeah. Um, St. Thomas? Yes. St. Thomas, oh. US Virgin Islands. That's where Jeremy's fighting. Uh, I'll be I'll be there pretty soon. He's fighting James Tony. I'm, fighting, and, uh, I'm, I'm doing an exhibition with James Tony in St. Thomas in uh, October. Oh, okay. Wow, with uh that's the celebrity uh yes. Yes, awesome. the, the University of of the Virgin Island is that the Virgin Nova? Islands? Yes. Yeah, that's where they're doing it. Is that like a stadium there? Yes, there's a beautiful stadium there. To request specific fighters to be interviewed, to request specific fights you want analyzed on box analysis, please, guys, subscribe and follow to our YouTube channel, and we're gonna make it happen. Peace. Hmm. We had the pleasure of, of interviewing your son uh, a few weeks ago. Um, great dude uh, and a great chef we hear as well. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Um, what, what, what do you push more, the cooking or the boxing? You have <laughs> well, you know what? Um, you know, as a, 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 a Virgin Islander, we, we love to eat, man. We love seafood. And uh, I love to cook myself. And, um, you know, I believe that, uh, you know, when Julius uh, decided that, you know, he wants to try cooking, he was getting ready for the Olympics. You know what I'm saying? And I told him, man, you can make this thing happen. You can, you can get your degree and still make it to the Olympics. And believe it or not, he did it, man. And uh, he took a lot of sacrifice, but he did it. Wow. I mean, he yeah. only had... He had, I think he said, 39 amateur fights. Now, I read somewhere, you tell me if I'm wrong, you only had 17 fight amateur. Is that true? 17. Woo! Wow. That is crazy how good you guys both were, especially you, obviously, because you had, you know, with that few amateur fights. So at what point did you start seeing that knockout power? Was it as an amateur? Well, um, yes, uh, my trainer was a very good trainer. Uh, most of my experience came from you know, training from the gym, um, sparring with, uh, you know, guys that were professional. I was an amateur, but I was sparring with the professionals, you know, and uh, that helped me a whole lot. And um, my, my trainer always said to me, he said, Julian, you don't have to hit hard. You don't have to, you don't have to crank up to try to hit hard. You naturally just hit hard. And um, all I want you to do is to flow with the punches. All I want you to do is to use your body Okay, with the punches, and uh, eventually everything is going to fall in place. And believe me, it sure did. <laughs> you know, yes, it, yes, it did. It's funny, yes, it did. It's funny you say that because I was watching some of your fights, right? And you really would turn every ounce of your body. I mean, to where your sh everything would just you, right, your right, energy right. would boom. It, is that what you think? That was the power you think? Oh, definitely. Um, you know, you you can you can develop power. Uh, you're born with it. I was born with it. And um, my coach, I think, just helped me to even improve it, you know. And um, a lot of fighters today, you, you have fighters that are very quick, very fast, but no power, you know, uh, yeah. because I believe that they're not using, I, I, I think, their body behind the punches, mm. you know. And, um, it, it's split seconds, uh, you know, reaction. And um, you can literally hit uh, uh uh with your you know if you're if you're 154 pounds okay you can deliver a punch okay that can actually i i believe uh uh stand up with some of the heavyweights mm. okay uh, according, to, according to how you throw the punch according to how you, you know you you learn the science of of punching wow yeah i i agree i agree but was it a huge jump from from uh, 
the welter welter weight to the to the to the, uh, to the middleweight. Yeah, I, I yeah I went to the welterweight middleweight and then uh, you know I, I, I junior I was junior middleweight then I went to the middleweight I was welterweight junior middleweight and middleweight. Yeah. Did you, and- did you feel the power difference between the weight divisions? Uh, I, I'll be honest with you. Um, I carried it with me. Um, um, you know, I, I was a natural uh, welterweight. You know, and moving up into the uh, the junior middleweight. You know, it was it was I was much stronger then. Mm. You know, and um, uh, I started to really sit down more on my punches. And um, you know, after that, I I wanted to get an opportunity to fight the best in the world. So. I was told that you might be able to do that in the middle in the middleweight division. So I went up to the middleweight and I started, you know, I, I took, you know, that technique, my, my, my you know, uh, it's, it's, it's a natural uh, thing too when it comes to punching, but um, there, there was a technique that I had to keep with me and uh, it stayed with me because um, of the, the delivery that I, I, I believe you know, I was using with my punches, uh, turning my, my hips, you know, uh, I, w- I would put my shoulders, my hip, my ties, my knees, my ankles, even my toenail into the punch. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Man, but, but Everything but, will be in, in, in that punch. You know, with, with, with 61 professional fights, dude, that is a, that is a, a, a beautiful career. With, and to only have, was that a six losses? Or is that six or eight? Well, you you also won championships, if I'm not mistaken, super welter and middleweight, right? Yeah, yeah in, in two weight division, yes, I I I won um, the WB, the WBA and the WBC. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, uh, middle, uh, the, middle junior middleweight, just... and I, I won the, the I won the middleweight twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I see it, but but just so that people know, what we're talking about welter is 47. Yeah, welterweight is is 147. And, and another one at 60, right? No, and uh, welterweight is 147, and junior middleweight is 150. Oh, junior middleweight, okay. Right. Yes. And, and you, you, and are, you are 5'11", or were you six feet? I'm 5'11", yes. 5'11". So you were at, and, and people, you know, don't understand, back in those days, that's, that was very tall for a welterweight, right? Yes, back then, yes, you, you can say that, yes, that, that's, that's, that's the truth. That was very A lot of people tall. look at me as being a big, a big uh, junior middleweight. Did you have big problems? Welterweight. Yeah. Did you have problems making the weight back then, or was that natural for you? Uh, it was natural. Um, you know, up to now, you know, um, people say, "Man, you look like you, man, you, you could go in the ring right now. You look like you're, you're in shape." <laughs> <laughs> uh, my metabolism is amazing, and um, you know, I think God gift, you know, blessed me with this gift, and um, you know, I, I, I stay in the gym, I work hard you know, with my athletes and um, I'm a coach right now and um, I'm trying to, you know, you know, give them that gift of, of the, you know, uh, punching and, and using their body behind the punches. Um, so speaking of that, of saying you're in shape right now, what do you think about the fighters coming back like Roy Jones, Tyson, and if you were approached and maybe you have been already, would you do that? Fight it, fight oh yeah, it. man, I would love to. You know what? I always wanted an opportunity to fight Sugar Ray Leonard. Oh, never got it. Well, I'll be honest with you. I was right there at the tip because he wanted to, he would have fight the winner of me and Terry Norris. Uh, and um, to beat Norris, I I, I I I I beat Terry Norris, but yet he refused to fight me, and he fought Terry Norris and still lost. Oh man! So up, up to this day, up to this day, I've been. I said, man, Ray. Let's get it on, man. You know, I, I, I would love the opportunity just to get in the ring with you. You are one of my favorite fighters. And, um, you know, come on, let's do eight rounds. Uh, uh, if Mike Tyson could do it, we can do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. What, what would you say in your career was your most satisfying, your most gratifying victory? Um, when I moved up in the middleweight division, and I, I fought in Beck. No, not in Trubeck. I fought um, Harold Graham. Okay. It, Harold and- Graham, where we fought in Spain. Spain, I think it was in Maribel, Spain, yeah. Why that And one? Uh, he was a very awkward fighter. He was a saltpah, and he was a strong, 
uh, 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 lefty. And, um, you know, uh, man, he came out and he was, man, he was really difficult to read. But um, I realized that, uh, you know, he, he felt that he had me. And that was the opportunity for me to catch him coming in. And I switched to my, my saltpah. I, you know, I fight saltpah too. A lot mm. of people don't know that. But I switched saltpah and he came in for the kill. And he opened up and I was able to catch him the right hook. Mm. And that was the end of it. Wow. And I became oh, the, the, the middleweight champion, WBC. Yeah, saying, well, what about that Mike McCollum fight? That that one was that was a war. That fight made me, man. You know, I lost I lost against Mike McCollum, but that fight made me. What okay, why it made you? In, in other words, um, you know, I was undefeated at that time. It was your first loss? Yeah, that was my first loss. It was my first shot for the world title, and um, I went in there. The whole listen, the the the, the entire my the entire country was backing me a hundred percent. And I went in there and I lost. And you know what? It really affected me to a point where I wanted to, I mean, stay. I just didn't want to come back home because I felt that I laid down. I, I, I actually disappointed everybody, my family, the wow. government, the friends, and the, you know, and somebody told me, said, listen, listen, your friends might turn their back on you. The government might, you know, might not accept you. Your family as well might, might not accept you, but there's one person that will never turn their back on you, and that's God. And when they said that, that changed my life. And that's why today I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian, and I'm, I'm serving God from that time up to now. And I tell you what, it's amazing. Uh, my life literally turned for the better. You know what I'm saying? And uh, after that, um, I had the opportunity Again, to fight for the um, for the Mike McCollum belt. As a matter of fact, Mike McCollum gave up the belt because he didn't want the rematch. Okay, and he decided that he was going to go up to a higher weight class, and I was able to fight in Quebec from Korea. Yeah, number one fighter, yeah, and um, yeah, uh, I was able to I was able to uh, revenge that fight, and uh, I won in the third round by wow. knockout. So, so you said that you people told you everybody might turn their back on you what actually did when you lost that fight you know because it a lot of people don't realize what what the fighter goes through especially somebody like you who was knocking everybody out right right and then when you how, how did you feel and i know I'm, it's a dumb question obviously you didn't feel good but how did you feel after that <laughs> first loss like you know did it was it a, did it affect you? yeah it, it can affect you in different ways uh, according to you know where your mind is and where you act you know as a person and, um, you know, I was really hurt because, you know, I, I, I went into the fight knowing that I was going to win. I had a lot of pride. No, I had a lot of pride. Mm. And, um, you know, after, you know, being uh, such a success and undefeated and, um, uh, you know, there was no way in the world that I was supposed to lose that fight. And the loss came. And you know what? I realized something. Okay. Sometimes a lot of us, Okay, are afraid to go out and, you know, give, take a risk. You know right. what I'm saying? Take yes. a chance. And, and uh, 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 I went out there and I was again, look, I was fighting. I knew Mike McCollum. I, I'll tell you what, we studied him. We looked at him. He was a tremendous fighter. But you know what? I decided that I was going and I was going to give it my all. And I went in there with a heart knowing that I was going to win this fight. And uh, when I lost, okay, it affected me to a degree, you know, to, uh, that I, I literally did not want to see anyone. I didn't want to come back home. I yeah. felt that everybody would have turned, you know, turned away from me because of, 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 of my arrogance, because I, I was so, I, I think I, I had a mentality that hey, ain't no way that Mike McCollum can beat me. And uh, that, really allowed me to open up to look to to actually losing something that was very very dear to me i wanted to be the world champion mm -hmm. and i had the opportunity it did not happen but right it, it showed me that look you can dust yourself off you can get back 
you know, and, and, and try this thing again. Don't give up, you know, don't throw the towel yeah. in, you know, even though I was knocked down, even though I was affected, you know, and, 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 and I, I really felt that I, I could have continued, but, um, you know, the referee, you know, I think, you know, used his uh, experience and felt that I was hot to that point. You know, I, I, I got some low blow. I got a thumb in my eye. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? No excuses. But you know what? I realized, you know, the fact that I went out there and I did my best. That right. mattered. Wow. That, so that mattered <clears throat> more than anything else. And uh, 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 a lot of stuff was coming in my head and say, man, you're a loser. You're a loser. But he said, but, but, you know, I said, you know what? At least I tried. There's some people are afraid to try mm -hmm. because they believe if they fail, they, 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 they will be of no good. But that's not true. You know, you've got to go out there and give it your best. Even if you fail, at least you know you tried. Wow. I'm still trying. I, get, you know I understand There's some people that. Out there that. That are afraid to go out there. They're afraid to fail, so they don't try. Right. You know what I'm saying? They, no, don't, I, give it a, they don't give themselves the opportunity. But I gave myself the opportunity and I realized that, hey, you know what? That's what it really takes, you know, for a champion, you know, to dust himself off and to get back. And I, I came back, man. What, and what I do thank you, God for that. What do you think it was about McCallum that gave you problems? Because, you know, on paper, you were a better fighter all around. Mike McCallum, yes, yes. Mike McCallum, okay, uh, is a body snatcher, man. Uh, they call him the body snatcher. But I'll tell you what. Uh, Lou Duva, okay, is his was his is um his coach his, his you know main and corner man, yes. and Lou Duva will throw the sink at you, <laughs> okay. Lou, Lou Duva, no, no, it's known for that. He's known for that. As a matter of fact, uh, my my corner, you know, told uh, uh the referee that hey, you got to look out for the low blow. We got to look out for the low blow. Because we know that, that these are the kind of games that uh, uh, some of the corner people play. Mm. And um, believe me, I, 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 I got some low blow. Um, I got a tongue in my eye. I'm not using that as an excuse, but Mike McCollum is a tremendous boxer. He's, he, I mean, he, this kid um, from Jamaica, okay, um, is a technician. I call him a technician. And... Um, Technician against a bomber, a, a, a technician against a a, a puncher. You uh -huh. know what I'm saying? And, and he was able to catch me some punches and really affected me. And he was the better man that night. It's funny, you know. I felt like Terry Norris's punches to to the person watching looked like they had more more bang on them. And those, you know, when you handled him, who was the hardest puncher that you ever been in there with? Well, um, I, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I don't know what, but Terry Norris, um, I didn't, I didn't feel the power like that. Um, you know, he's quick, you know, very fast. Um, his speed can also be deceiving, makes you make it look as if he is a really hard puncher, but he's really not. Mm. Okay. Uh, um, I remember I fought a guy by the name of Kudalix in Connecticut. Uh, after my fight with Mike McCollum, he was, um, he was a fight that I had to, to, to take if I was going to get the opportunity to fight in Quebec. And the winner of that fight would, would fight in Quebec in Las Vegas. And um, I went up there and, uh, man, I knocked down in Quebec. I mean, I knocked down um, Kudalit from Connecticut. Boom. And I thought that was it. But he came back and he knocked me down. Oh, oh shit. Okay, he knocked me down, man, and um, we got up, and uh, he got up, survived, I got up, survived. Now, who is going to win this fight? And, uh, and we were in the last round, and I knew that I had to pull out, uh, you know, and I'm sure he had the same mentality. I'm sure the corners send him out to, 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 to try to, you know, take this thing over. My corner did, did the same thing. And you know what? I went out there and I caught him, man, a right hand, left hook. And that was the end. He got knocked out. Wow. Okay. In the, in the, in, in the 10th round. 
And uh, I had the opportunity again to fight for the junior middleweight championship of the world in Las Vegas. Yeah, you know, and, uh, in Trubeck, uh, not in Trubeck, but uh, Kudalik was a really tough fighter, man. He, look, he wanted that. He wanted to, to fight for that title. He wanted that title. And I felt that was one of my toughest fights. Wow. That, uh, After that comeback. You know, t- this, this month, August, is your anniversary month of your last fight. Oh man, yeah. As a matter of fact, one of one of my coaches, one of uh, my my um, you know the guys that work with me in the gym, you know, said Julian, you know this your anniversary is coming up. I said, wow, you remembered, huh? <laughs> yeah, he remembered. Quincy Taylor, and I said, wow, August that's amazing. Nineteen ninety-five. That's yes. a long career. That's a long Seriously. career. It is. Yeah. Six, you know, Sixty-one fights when I was total? about when I was about twelve. 14 years old. So why you did know? you have uh, so few amateur fights? Um, because uh, the Virgin Islands, there was, there was not much boxing here in the Virgin Islands. We had to do a lot of traveling to Puerto Rico. Most of my fight was in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico is, 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 is by flight is only about what? Um, 30 minutes. Wow. I mean, I think yeah, even though most Americans have, you know, Jeremy had 300 amateur fights. I don't think it's that bad of a thing to get less amateur fights because then you go into the pros and tell me if I'm wrong with a lot less mileage on you. That's the truth. That's the truth. Right. And, that's yeah, the truth. That's true. and, and it, it has a lot to do with, it has a lot to do with your, your, um, you know, your coach, you know, um, you know, there, there, there's some coaches that can really improve you. And there's some coaches that can also destroy you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just going to be real. Okay. No, and, I, get uh, it. I I think, I think that that because I've had so many amateur fights, like I came and, it, and nothing can season you for a professional career. You just right. got to go through it. But like right. the the nervousness, I learned how to control well, yeah, before yeah, a yeah. fight because I'd had so many amateur fights. And then, you know, your first 10, 15 fights, you ain't fighting anybody anyways. You know what I mean? Right. But you, you, you're learning. So for, you're for learning, me, right. I, you're developing your yeah, craft. Yeah, yeah yes. Yeah, so I mean, I, I think, but but for somebody like you who's only had like thirty amateur fights, if that, I mean, I mean, I, I that would have scared me to death to fight like that, you know, to take the next step straight away like that. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. said, you the you have thing. thirty amateur fights. You have you have 60, 61 professional fights. Right. You know that. So you know, you, so, uh, you know, you, I, I, your my, first my, half. My, my, my experience came really. Uh, I started to grow much more i started to go to different levels as a professional amateur wise you know i had a lot of speed i had a lot of you know uh courage strength you you know what i'm saying and um yeah i started I to i started to really home in on my power and um as an amateur you know and um i i became i think uh the 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 champion here in the virgin islands there was a guy here who was also from the and he, he wasn't born here in the virgin islands but he um, came from St. Kitts, but he was in St. Croix. His name is Livingstone Bramble. Yeah, we know. Oh, him. God. Yeah. Legend. Livingstone Legend. Bramble. We fought three times as amateurs. And what happened? Wow. And he, listen to me. Um, I fought him here in, the, in, St., in, 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 in St. Thomas. I won, went over to St. Croix. He beat me in St. Croix. Okay. Wow. Then we had a next fight again in St. Croix, and I beat him in St. Croix as well. Uh, I say it was two and one, but we never had the opportunity to get the fourth fight. Wow, we'd like to get but it. Livingstone, Livingstone Bramble, man, I remember him when I was a kid. I, I'm on, I'm sitting in the couch on my couch watching yeah. him fight, scared of him. <laughs> and he kept that dude was gangster. Kept changing his name from Livingston to Razai, I didn't know which one. Yeah. Rasai Bramble, yeah. Yeah, he kept flipping his name around. Um, Curious, man. Look, I, I never forget, man, it, it used to be so exciting. You know, uh, Bramble made things so, uh, I, I think, exciting because, you know, he was a competitor. He was a challenger. He, you know, he, 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 and he was in charge of his boys, them in St. Croix. Yeah. You know? So we had a little island thing going on. St. Thomas versus St. Croix. Wow. You know what I'm really? saying? Yeah, that's... yeah and every time we, every time I go over there, 
he was the one that I would have to fight. And that's at what, 35? We were, yeah, we were, we was down there about, uh, yeah, I would say, uh, yeah, 30, 35. Well, we're talking yeah, about man. weight, people who don't know what we're talking about. Like 135, 130, we, we, we imply the one. So just so that people know what we're talking about. Right, right, man, right, I, right, right, right. People, uh, people don't understand. Like people, guys, like I got a friend named Tim Austin who was, a, uh, I think he was a 12 pounder or a 19 pounder. Yeah. Much hard as hell. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm like, man, if you hit me again, I'm going to punch you in the throat. You <laughs> yeah. But man. I mean, but, but you see, like, these guys, you guys like, you know, these tall, thin, you know, the guys that were shaped like you, I mean, they, they punched the hardest, you right. know, because you, yeah. your kinetic, your body, is your kinetics are just working, man. Is it, and, and, there, and, and you are one of the hardest punchers ever. In history, yeah. Well, right, right, right. Absolutely. Was there anybody that you sparred, not fought, but sparred, like a, somebody with a name that you sparred that you could tell us a story about, something that stands out? Well, um... Uh, Don King, I, I tell you what, we, we used to um, train in OL, Ohio, uh -huh. okay? Um, uh, uh, Mike Tyson was, uh, used to be there, Tim Witherspoon, a lot of the uh, champions that Don King had. And um, uh, there was a guy by the name, uh, if I remember his name fully, uh, he was a very tough kid. Um, oh boy, I fought him as well. He was him. my spar mate, but I ended up fighting him in Mexico. Okay. Um, I, I can't bring his name right now, but listen, uh, let me share this with you guys. He was a sulpar, and then he came into camp, you know what I'm saying? Um, um, because uh, 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 the, 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 um, one of my coaches or one of my, um, you know, people that work in my, in my corner, you know, we, we bring in a lot of fighters mm -hmm. that were class fighters. And this guy had a lot of class. This guy could have boxed. He had a tremendous amateur uh, a resume. Mm -hmm. And man, he was solid boy. And uh, I had to really step up my game when I was going to fight him, when I was going to spar with him. Okay. And we started sparring, man. And oh, man, it was a war. It was, used to be war. Every time me and he spar, it was war. Wow. And uh, he became one of, the, one of my chief spar mates back at that time and i think his coaches decided that you know what we're not going to spy anymore because we think he can beat you julian oh. <laughs> oh, and um they got dan can give them the opportunity didn't you work know, out like said, great you know sparring is one thing but when you're in the ring it's the next man yeah, yeah it's the next level you know what I mean? next and, level. and a lot of people don't realize that a lot of fighters think because man you, they get off punches and uh you know, his, his, his slick style and his sulfur stand, he would, he would have been able to, but we fought in, in Mexico, in um, the Ateca Stadium. Well, can you break down the difference between what well, you're saying there's a difference? What's the difference in the mentality between a sparring and a fight? Which is- it's Yes, one of the, the I, I think the difference is that you know that you have on uh, bigger gloves, you have on headgear, you have on, you know, and, your, 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 your game is to really develop, you know, uh, 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 certain styles and, uh, uh, and you want to be able to uh, commit, you know, to certain punches. My corner will tell me to do certain things, you know, with different fighters. We all have different uh, spar mates. And he was one of the, the, the last guys that they would put because the, he was the best, you know, and they wanted me to really uh, a time, you know, my timing, you know what I'm saying? My range, you know what I'm saying? I'm getting off my, my punches. And because I, I was doing that, working on that, and he felt that, you know, he could have beat me because I wasn't giving him everything that I had. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. I was working, I was working on different moves that my coaches wanted me to work on with him. And uh, being that he was such a tremendous athlete, you know what I'm saying? And I'm, uh, I'm, I, sometimes I go about uh, close to um, 12 to 15 rounds. Sparring. Okay? Really? Sparring, man. And, wow. and, and we use him. We use him as the last man. So I have to pick up my game with him. You see, wow. the difference is, the difference is he's going to be in there with me fresh. Yeah. He's not going to come in. So is it? 
he's not going to come in, okay? Uh, 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 uh. When after and I did, uh, when after I did um, at least twelve rounds before, you know what I'm saying? And then he comes in. Yeah. I'm tired, and and you know, and that's the difference, right? You know. So when I meet him in the ring, and we are going to actually start to fight we're going to actually have a, 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 a competition it's going to be a total different thing sure from sparring oh, yeah. sparring is sparring sparring and is believe like me, it was and he realized that and he said man wow i'll never forget it you know um uh, 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 uh you know training in mexico is a whole different story as well because the altitude man mm. mexico city yes it's very yeah, you, you 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 gotta get you gotta get climatized man Wow. And um, uh, uh, I realized that, you know, I went up there at least three weeks before in advance. So just that I could get climatized. Wow. But they wanted to beat it. And they felt that if they came in um, a couple of days, they will be able to beat the, 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 the um, you know, the climate or the, the you know, altitude mm -hmm. thing. But uh, I knew it would have been a big problem, man. Wow. And, uh, you know, hey, we went at it. And man, after the second round, that was it. Wow, it, it was it was it. It was like slow motion. Wow. And um, he he just he just he just couldn't understand what was going on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'll he just breathe. Couldn't understand what was going on. The, the altitude, <laughs> look, that altitude is not easy, babe. That's wow. why a lot of fighters so love not. to go to Big Bear now. Yeah. So I uh, completely yeah. understand. I completely. Understand. Yeah. What about so who who in in your career was? And it could, it could maybe not a championship fight or just somebody who really, really tested your your your, uh, your, your skills. It could have been in your first ten, could have been your your last forty, like whatever. Like who really tested I'll tell you? you? What, I'll tell you who it is. Um, Tate, Frank, Frank Tate? Tate, Tate, Frank Tate. Oh, really? We fought in Las Vegas. We went uh, ten rounds. Man, that dude. That dude was slick. That dude was a, a, a good boxer. And uh, man, look, <laughs> and I think that Frank Tate was actually um, one of the, the guy that I fought in Mexico, one of my spa mates, the spa mate that I fought in Mexico, Frank Tate, uh, uh, well, he was actually one of the stable mates. Really? Okay. And they, they worked in the same gym. They, they, they had the same coach. They had the same coach. And Frank Tate, was a boxer, man. Oh my goodness! And I tell you what, uh, we went ten rounds, and I that, that, look, I had to box, man. I that's one of the first time I've really um, showed my boxing skill, my my leg work. A lot of people looking for my power, and I eventually caught him some good punches. Uh, Mill Mills Lane was the um, no, not yes, Mills Lane, no, not Mills Lane. The guy from Vegas, I think. Had a controversial thing with um, Richard oh, Steele. Richard Steele, yeah. Yes, Richard Steele. Like yes. that, like that. Yes, Richard Steele. And I remember, man, and I was in there, boom, 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 working, and um, I caught, I caught, uh, what's his name, a good punch, and he took a knee. Oh. He <laughs> took a knee in the tenth round, the last round, so, and he got. So time out, out, time out, time out, time out, time out. Yeah, people, I'm gonna I'm gonna let people know. Look, if a guy takes a knee, it's either you hurt him or you pissed him off. You're right. <laughs> so what happened? <laughs> so I what heard happened? him. I caught him a left hook, and he took a knee. Okay, I went back. I went yeah. to my uh, neutral corner, and uh, my coach is telling me, "Get him, get him, get him." You know, and I went after <laughs> him. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but guess what, yeah. man, Frank? No, he did. wasn't ready. No, man. <laughs> he, man, he caught me a good punch. After that, you know, hurt me a little bit. I got my, my composure back, and I went after him again. Bam, bam, bam. And look, it was a tremendous fight. Uh, 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 I'm going to go back and look at that one. Yeah, you got to look at that fight. Now that, that, that I got the inside, Frank I'm going to go back and watch that. Yeah. But I remember, I remember uh, Richard Steele's, um, the, the black guy from Vegas, the, co the, the uh, referee. He told him, he told Frank Tate, Okay, this is what I heard him telling Frank Tate, keep your hands up and move. Wow. <laughs> That's funny. I, oh, hey, I remember a referee one I time. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I, could hey, not I, believe I had it. this 
I had the he's same thing. My, I forget. My opponent. I mean, my, you know, my opponent. I, yeah, so you I had the same thing. One time, I hit somebody. And I, yeah. I, I, I broke my left hand, so I hit him with right hand. I slipped under a punch, and the referee and like I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm headed for high water all the way to the other side of the ring. Yeah, because I'm like, I'm, I'm trying to stay. I'm trying to kill time, and the referee said, "You got him." And then I looked around. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, unheard, my goodness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know who neutral. was. It, it's, yeah, yeah, right. But it, you know, I, I know. I don't remember who. Hey, it helped me out. I was my hand was broke. I was, yeah, it didn't I was help tired. you, though. Telling the other guy yeah. to put your hands up and move. What kind of shit is that? <laughs> yeah, right? remember, yeah um, he told me. He's like, I remember. He said, "You got him." And I was like, Ooh. "Whoa!" That oh. happened to me. <laughs> that happened to me with um with Into Beck. Um, I think it was uh, Mills Lane. The, the uh, Mills Lane was the one that was was with. with that was refereeing that fight. And um, I remember I caught uh, into back a left hook. All I heard, I, all I heard the referee say, good shot. <laughs> <laughs> you said, I was like, what? <laughs> I was shocked. You know, I heard the referee say, good shot. And man, it was crazy. Just crazy. You know, that, 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 you know funny. it's amazing what we experience in, in, in um, you know, a lot of our fights, man. I'm sure there are a lot of guys out there you know, that have experienced a lot of different things. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. I mean, yeah. And just like that, like Muhammad Ali, I mean, not Muhammad Ali, but uh, Mike Tyson. And um, uh, it was it, who was it? Um, Holyfield, when this guy came in with a parachute. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. That was oh, crazy. Yeah. That was nuts. That was nuts. That was crazy, man. There was a lot you of know? crazy. So let me ask you this. Was there anybody from your era that you, besides Sugar Ray, that you really wanted to fight, but you never got a chance to? Like, who was the, on the hit list? Um, I, I wanted to fight Mugabe. Really? Yeah, Ooh. I wanted to fight Mugabe. That guy was amazing. Um, but you, all these yeah. names you're saying, they scare me, because these were guys I I seen when I was a kid, and I'm like, God, John the Beast Mugabe? My God, that's the scariest <laughs> name ever. <laughs> I mean, like, but Mugabe, Mugabe, I'm like, dude. I, want, dude. I wanted to fight, I also wanted to fight, um, uh, what's his name? Um, he's he's uh, I wanted to fight Michael Nunn, I didn't get to fight Michael. Oh, uh, I went in his backyard. Nunn, and all. What about you know, um, uh, Michael Nunn? Roy, would be Jones, a headache. Roy Jones, I had the opportunity to fight Roy Jones, oh, what but his father pulled out. His father pulled out. What? Why? Uh, you know, I guess he said, Man, Julian hits too hard. Well, also, you probably were not fighting, Roy also, it's Roy. not time. Right, I was gonna say also early in Roy's career. Yeah, Roy Jones was really green at that time too. Wow. Yeah, it wouldn't be. I mean, that that because you would have dumped Roy. I mean, he would have done all the fancy this and that. Right, right, right. He right. wouldn't have learned nothing. He wouldn't have learned nothing. And you right, know, right, for you, right. it's just another fight. But for him, you know, you got to educate the fighter, and that probably wouldn't exactly, have man. That, that's the truth. You know, I, I also wanted the opportunity. Um, there was a kid, uh, Dan King. Uh, had this guy, man. Uh, he was from, I think he was from uh, down under. Um, you know that that kid um, that. Did he I die already? Mayweather fought this this European guy from not European, but he was from down under from um, Mayweather fought? Australia. Australia. It's about Roger Mayweather, somebody. Like that. Roger Mayweather. I mean, no, no, uh, not Roger Mayweather, but. And Mayweather fought this guy and knocked him out with a left hook. Hatton? Hatton, right? This guy. This Nicky, kid, he's from England. This kid was from Hatton's country. That's England. Yeah, it's England? Yeah, Hatton. Rick, 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 Hatton's Ricky Hatton's from England. England. So what, what about like Chavez? You never had any interest? Um, which Chavez? His, Julio, his... Julio Cesar. No, he, Julio Cesar Chavez. We were um, with Don King. I fought a lot on his undercards, uh, but we were never, he, 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 his weight class mm -hmm. was really, he was a lightweight, right? Lighter, yeah. At the, at he was like 35, right? Yeah, right. right. He, ended up the lightweight. he ended up fighting at 47, yeah. but you had already moved up. So how do you think you would 
fare, like how would you have done against the generation after you? Like, for example, how do you think you would have fared in, in Mayweather, De La, De La Hoya, that era, Mosley? Oh, man, I, you know, I, 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 I felt, you know, um, not only that, but guys like um, Triple G, you know, I was, I, I, you know, I worked, um, Julius was uh, actually one of Triple G's uh, spa mates. He told us. Cheap, yeah. cheap spa mate, yeah. Yeah. And we went up there, you know, and, um, you know, his coach, you know, um, what's his name again? You know his coach? Triple G's coach? I forget who trained him. I forget who trains him. Anyway, um, his coach actually was training Terry Norris. Oh, okay. Yeah. He Abel Sanchez? Him. You know, Abel, Abel Sanchez. There you Abel go. Sanchez. Abel, Abel Sanchez was training Terry Norris. But um, we had the opportunity and um, they loved Julius. Julius, oh man, um, was really good at, 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 you know, using his range and punches. Blah, 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 blah. And I remember... You know, um, after a fight, his, his, uh, Abel said, Julian, man, wow, you know what? This kid, Triple G, reminds me a lot of you sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I said, yeah, because, man, he hits. And when he hits, oh, my goodness. He puts everything into his punches. But Julius, you know, he puts Julius his body said, into the punch. Julius said that he was the only guy to last, last take it all, right? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. You know what? One time Julius caught him an uppercut. Okay, and and, and when, when I say a tremendous uppercut, and uh, literally had to stop. Could not believe what was happening, and he didn't know what happened. Really, it, it's like it was like a a a a, 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 a flash. Uh huh. Beautiful uppercut, and um, able stop the the the, the fight. The, I mean the sparring. Until, you know, um, Sanchez got himself together again. I mean, not Sanchez, but um, Triple, Triple G. G got himself together again. And I said, whoa, man, you know, for Julius to do something like that, you know what I'm saying? Wow. It was, it was amazing. And um, ever since then, but I always thought that I know it would have been, oh, man, epic if me and, and this kid was, was able to have, you know, a fight. If he was in my weight class back in my time. Triple G. Triple G. Wow. That'd be, that'd be good. That'd be good. That'd it'd, be been, good. it'd have been war. It'd have been war, man. That would have been. And what well, about, it, so what about um, Hagler? Oh, Marvin the Hagler. Exact yeah, question. I, Are you going to ask that? The exact question I never, really, I never really got, I didn't have that, I don't know. Uh, I'm mostly Sugar Ray. Uh, I don't think um, Hearns want anything, wanted anything. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, it was said that her, um, um what's his name, um, the guy that does the um, the celebrity boxing. Who? Oh. Um, this the young kid man that just retired now. Oh, Zab. Zab Judah. Zab Judah. Yeah, Zab Judah said to uh, Tommy Hearns, "Man, why don't you fight Julian Jackson? You know." He, uh -huh. he wanted to fight. He wanted to fight uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, but and then um, uh, uh, on this this was on the on the on the on you know on the media and um, <laughs> Larry, I mean um, Tommy Hearn said uh, the heart the heart mm, let me see the heart yeah. the heart <laughs> he started <laughs> thinking and said you know what I'll fight the heart I'll fight the heart bring him man anytime. Yeah. <laughs> Julian said, Julian, I don't think that's going to happen. Do, do, do you yeah. think that, do you think that your generation was a tougher breed of fighters than today? Yes, I think our generation was, was more, um, you know, into uh, uh, the game and, and the love of, 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 of the game was, 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 you know, what we really desired more than anything else. Um, you know, we, we wanted to go there and prove you know, that, hey, you know, we are the best. Uh, um, you know, I, I, I wouldn't say that money wasn't involved, but money wasn't really uh, all that we wanted. We just wanted to go out there and show the world that, you know what? You know, I came from nowhere. I came from nothing, but here, I'm, here, here I am now. And I, I, can, I can be somebody. I can make it. And I think that's what boxing was about. 
back then to me mm. because I know where I came from. And, um, you know, here it is, I'm, 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 I'm able to sit with governors. I'm able to talk to presidents. I'm able to wow. visit, you know. Wow. And uh, it, it's just amazing, you know, what boxing did and, and the love of the sport, you know, was something that I believe that we held daily. Some, you know, took it lightly and it, 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 it worked against them. But those oh. that really, those that really cherish the, 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 the sport of boxing, um, I think, you know, had a, a good long career, had a good career. You know, I was telling, yeah. you, I was telling your son that if you fought in the age of social media, you would have been so huge because, you know, the way you fought was super exciting. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's you know what I mean? And, you know, I don't know if, if I'm sure you feel this, but, you, you know, you're one of the few fighters that, that people literally, you know, because your punching power, I mean, you're one of the few fighters that are almost legendary status and, and, and almost like a god, almost like a superhero. You know what I mean? We'll talk about the Hawk. You know amazing, that? amazing, man. Amazing. You know, as a youngster, as a young boy growing up, I loved the superheroes. And um, I was addicted to uh, drawing. You know, I used to oh. draw superheroes. And um, uh, my teacher, I, I was in about, I was in fifth, sixth grade. And um, I, I love to draw. I still do draw. I still draw. But I was a fanatic and uh, I carried around this pad with my with all my work and my teacher saw it and she said man this is good you know what I'm going to put you in a I'm going to put you in a in a contest you know and I went into the contest and I came second That's okay cool. I came second and guess what I did not realize that I would have gotten involved this is way before I even got into boxing uh-huh. I was actually in a sense you know, drawing my destiny. You know, I was in a sense, uh, uh, I, I think getting in touch with something I didn't know because boxing is almost like a superhero type, uh, you know, job. You know, yeah. you got to put on your uniform, you know what I'm saying? So after you don't work out, you got to go into the ring and you got to go there and you got to show your stuff. But somebody you know like you, it's different. Like, I'm sure, and you know, you wouldn't say this in front of other fighters, but when you're standing next to another fighter who didn't have the kind of power you did, there's just a different energy and respect that you get. And that right. must be so amazing. Right, 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 right. And um, it, it's, it's just amazing that, um, you know, I was able now to, uh, you know, realize that, wow, you know what? I, I didn't realize maybe I was really, you know, uh, 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 making uh, maybe a little connection to the destiny that God had for me. And uh, here it is. Now, um, you know, I, I got the opportunity to, to, to fight and to, you know, become some, something to the, the community. You know what? A hero is not known for what he does for himself, but what he does for others. He does for the you, know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, that's, that, that's yeah. absolutely true. Look, man, we really appreciate you talking to us. Uh, we're going to be in St. Uh, St. Thomas for Jeremy's fight. So we'd love awesome, to- man. Hey, I'm looking forward to see you, we Jeremy. We want you to come, man. We're, we're, I'm going to be in his corner. Both, you better be believe it. I'll be there, man. I'm going to be in his corner. Yeah, so we're all three of us will be there. Yep. <laughs> man, all three wow. of us, man. It's so, going to be a great time. We're going to have, I'm, gonna have a lot of fun. And um, we're going to want to check you out there. We'll do, an, we'll do an interview with you as, that, as well there. For sure. Thank you for your time. You've been most gracious and, and kind and you know, God loves you. We love you, and uh, and don't don't forget our sport, man. We, God bless. One love, man. Thanks, God bless you, time. brother. Peace. I appreciate you guys. Peace. One love. Take care, man. Okay. okay.